Okay. So now we have a quorum. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of nine. We're good. So we'll call the May 20th meeting of the uh, Arts Committee to order. First item of business is the uh, minutes of April the 29th. I just had one question on the minutes. Okay. The only thing I, I was reading through it, I thought everything looked good except for the part about the marketing group coming up with a grant. Mm -hmm. And it said that we would have something by the next meeting, which I don't remember agreeing to as a timeline. If we did, then we totally missed that, but. I can change it in the minutes, Meg. Okay. We'll try and have it for next meeting. Anything else? Someone want to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve. Michelle uh, moves. We need a second. I second. Molly seconds. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. So the next item of business, it says recognize Arts Committee Chair and Vice Chair. Uh, <laughs> I think this one's in your court, Abby. Yeah, I just, um, I just wanted to thank you both for everything that you've done for so many years on the committee. Um, Rob's been, Rob helped to get this committee started with the former mayor, two mayors ago now, Doug Zwonk. And he was here before I came to the city. Um, so he's been around a while. And then Megan joined shortly thereafter and has been on here for 13 years. So I just wanted to thank you both so much for everything that you've done for the committee and the amount of time that you spent. And I know Rob's been on several city committees and we're gonna miss you both so much. So thank you. Thanks for the kind words. Thank you. It's been a it's been a real pleasure, and I'm sorry to be leaving leaving when so much um, really great talent is coming along. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this committee can accomplish. Me too. Megan, is there a um, arts committee in Baraboo? I am told that there is, <laughs> but I think I don't think it's as organized as uh, Middleton. So we'll see. <laughs> Have you started renovations on your new house yet, Megan? We have not. We have um, identified a builder and we've had some meetings with the builder and the architect, but we haven't um, broken ground yet, so to speak. I think it's going to take at least two years to finish. Wow, that's yeah. a big undertaking. So I, I already told Rob this, but I'm buying Megan's house. So oh I'm going to be moving God. into Megan's house. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. I just, I knew about the stained glass and I was like, I have to go look at it. <laughs> Somebody has to move into that house that loves the stained glass. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, you'll be around the corner from Rob and I now. Yep, I'm excited. <laughs> I told Abby that because of the connection of that house to the Arts Committee through uh, Megan and now with Abby, it will have to be declared a uh, city of Middleton landmark. Absolutely. <laughs> we might have to ask Molly for her uh, for permission. Yeah. <laughs> it can be stenciled on the sidewalk in front of the house. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, and so Rob tells us that he'll still come and join us occasionally for committee meetings and Megan is willing to help us out when conservation questions arise. So we'll make sure to keep in touch with both of you. I can just tell you a historical uh, note that I got, uh, I was a member of the city council back in 2000. And I can't remember when the committee was formally, it was an unofficial committee in the beginning, but um, we had a developer, Bob Blutner, who wanted to donate a piece of sculpture to put in a city right of way. And the mayor at that time, Doug Zwonk thought that we'd we didn't have any mechanism to um, handle such things. So he suggested we start an arts committee and he asked me if I would chair it. And I said, okay. And uh, here we are, however many years later. 
I would still do it, but um, uh, the current mayor wants more turnover on the committees and uh, I'm like a, a has been in that respect. So we have to make room for, for, for younger and uh, more vigorous blood. Rob, I think last time I just made it in under the wire. I think I, I think I was on the chopping block for this time around if I wasn't moving out of town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he generally doesn't like people to serve more than two terms. And that's that's a new thing under, you know, that's just his preference. He wants to get more people on committees. So it's nothing personal. He's done he's done that to several committee members for committees that I staff that have been on for a long time, but we'll definitely miss having you both. Mm -hmm. um, do we wanna go around and quickly do introductions? Cause we have Aaron here and we also have Srija as well. And they're both gonna be coming onto the committee. So Rob, why do, I guess we kind of know who you are, but do you wanna quick give an introduction again, just brief? So I'm a former member of the city council, Rob Conheim. Um, I have a doctorate in physiology and worked as a uh, lung researcher in the UW Medical School until my retirement in 2018. But uh, my interest in imaging goes back to uh, my childhood when I learned photography from my dad. So, and recently I became interested in, in a, something called acrylic pour, which uh, I use to make what I call splashter pieces. Um, so that's who I am. All right, Megan, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Mackey. Um, I've been on the committee for 13 years. And um, my interest, my background in art is that I restore artwork for museums and collectors. I have a degree in art conservation. And um, so my interest is trying to help the city acquire art that would have longevity and keep good, take good care of the art that we already own. Michelle, do you want to introduce yourself? Am I muted? No, I'm a, uh, I'm Michelle Phillips. I'm the editor of the Middleton Times Tribune. Um, my art background is more in planning, um, festivals, and that type of thing, juried art. Um, so that's kind of where my area lies. I'm not an artist myself. Meg? I'm Meg McCombs. I've been on the committee for four years and I'm a graphic designer. Um, Christina? Hi, can you hear me? Uh, my name is Christina. I joined the committee last year. It's been almost a year for me, which feels kind of sudden. Um, I have a degree in gallery and museum studies, so I work installing exhibitions, during art, and installing shows. And Molly? I'm Molly McDermott. I grew up in the Duluth, Minnesota area and lived in seven states. And I moved to Middleton in 1965. And if you move, you have to pack. So here I sit. Um, so that's it for the current committee members. Now let's hear from the new committee members. Erin? Hi, I'm Erin Summers. Um, I am an artist on the side. My day job's with an architectural firm, but I do um, acrylic and oil painting on the side. I participate in the Art Fair Off the Square with Wisconsin Arts and Crafts Alliance every year for both summer and winter. I do a lot with Middleton Outreach Ministries creating for a cause every year. And um, before COVID set in the Middleton Art Walk and I currently have paintings up at the John Christine Gallery on Parmenter Street. So I'm involved in art in all kinds of ways. Um, I'm coming off of the Parks and Recreation Mission with City of Middleton and hoping to get some um, alternative programs going for youth art. You can help us get art in the parks too, since you have the parks connection. Yes. <laughs> Srija? Hi, I'm Srija. I'm a ninth grader at Middleton High School. For my art background, I've taken a couple of art classes and in middle school, I was chosen to be on the mural club, which I found pretty interesting. Srija, are you Kotesh's daughter? Yeah. Okay, great. I, I know your dad. 
Um, all right, and then the other person on the line is Jake from T Wall, and he's um, he's here just to listen in on the conversation about the Middleton Center windows. So, okay, let me share out here again. All right, I think we can go to. Oh, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Abby with the City Planning Department. I think we can go ahead and go on to item number two, Rob. Referral from the Plan Commission for Window Art Element, uh, Middleton Center, Phase Three. Um, uh, you, I don't. If, did you see in the packet that uh, it sounds like Jake wants us as a committee to choose eight historical images, mm -hmm. uh, and that the, I think he provided twenty-four. I don't know if you've had a chance to go through those. Did it, Did you all have a chance to look at them? Yes. Because I it may be time consuming for us to go through all 24. Do you want to do that, Abby? Or um, well, it's up to the committee. So this, just as a reminder, the reason for this project is that the Middleton Center phase three building is built with storefront windows, but it's parking at the first level. And so the goal was to try to apply some some artistic element to the windows so that when people are walking by, they're looking at the artwork rather than looking into the storefront windows and seeing parked cars. And so I think Molly actually suggested the historic photograph idea. And um, from what I got from Jake, it looks like T wall is um, in agreement with that. I know we had also sent some artists names over that they could consider but it looks like um i'll let jake speak to this but it looks like they've decided to go the historic photograph route i can, I can hi guys i'm jake with you all um i think just our thought process was it'd be cool to have some historic photos on those um on those windows and also it's just you know the whole middleton center development is kind of that brick main street kind of feel so we thought we'd um, put historic photos on those windows and we thought it'd look um, pretty nice. So we liked your suggestion, was it Megan? Um, so yeah, and, and, and if you guys want, don't want to pick uh, eight of the photos, I know I put a lot in there. I kind of got carried away when I was going through the, I'm from Middleton, so I got carried away when I was going through the Middleton Historical Society pictures, but um, yeah, we, we can pick them too as well, but I just figured I'd give you guys the option. Well, I guess one option would be for us to go through them uh, maybe after the meeting and we could forward our choices to Abby that she could have then in turn forward to Jake or, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know that it's appropriate for us to be taking time now. It'll take a while for us to go through these as a during a committee meeting. Uh, I'd like to make a suggestion, Molly. Uh, I wonder if the, if the, photos could be put into two categories. One would be the downtown businesses and the other would be the workplaces. And if those two could be exchanged sometimes where it'd be the hotels and the, and the buildings on the street and then another time where, where they were employed or where they were self-employed. And I wanted to make a comment about the photo of the feed mill my neighbor was Leonard and Bernice Lamberty, and Leonard was the uh, fire chief. And when the feed mill was on fire, um, I invited Bernice to come up and we watched from, from an upstairs window. And then after the fire was put out, the neighborhood had rats. They all escaped the, their you know, they, they fled from the building when it was on fire. So that's my story. Jake, is it practical for the images to be interchangeable, that they can be changed out from time to time, or are they going to be permanent? It will be a vinyl application. Um, I would have to ask our fabricator and our installation person. I don't know. I don't. I guess I don't know how much of a pain it would be if we'd be able to save the vinyl application and then reapply those, you know, um, a year down the line. It might be difficult, but um, that'd be a question for our uh, guy over at AM Solutions. 
in terms of printing, it would be like double the cost, though it doesn't really make sense um, financially to do that. So yeah, once you print them and get them on, they're going to stay on for quite a while. They'll last a long time, especially if they're not in direct sunlight. Um, I just had one little tip that I saw while scrolling through it. I thought the ones with people in it were a little bit more interesting. So I don't know if the rest of the committee would be open to just having Middleton Center choose the ones that they like. And then next, like, next time, could you tell us which ones you chose? And as long as they aren't, you know, I don't think any of them are bad. I don't know why we wouldn't <laughs> approve it, you know? So I, 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 think I, think think it's your, I think it's your building. So maybe you guys should choose. Uh, yeah, if you guys are okay with that, we can do that. So do you, um, I mean, obviously this has to be approved by everybody, but would you want us to bring back the ones we choose and then wait to apply them after that or go ahead, apply them and then um, bring back the ones we chose and maybe pictures of them applied um, for the next meeting? I think we would probably would like to see them before they go up, um, but I don't think that, uh, you know, like Meg said, I don't think that any of them are bad. Yeah, we could, we could definitely do that. My, my only contribution to this is that um, it'd be nice if many of them were buildings that still existed. So the condensed milk factory and the opera house are two examples of people buildings that people will know what they're looking at. So to the extent that we could do that, I think that would be really nice. Just a clarification, you said buildings that still do exist? Yes, that people can recognize. Okay, okay. Um, I'm wondering too, like some of them have pretty small detail and how is that going to reproduce on the vinyl? Because, you know, the ones, especially with a lot of people or the one with the horses and carriages. And so I'm wondering if those might be more difficult to replicate with the vinyl. Yeah, and, and I talked to our uh, fabricator about that too. He, he was said he'd get back to me. So it may kind of limit our decision-making on the photos, but um, we'll try to make sure uh, the ones that we do choose um, turn out good, I guess, on the vinyl. So uh, shall we make a motion to uh, let let uh, Jake and T. Wall choose the images and then come back to us and show us the ones they chose before they install them? Sure. So I'll make that motion. Somebody want to second that? I can second it. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Does that seem reasonable, Jake? Yes, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it and have a good rest of your night. You too, thank you. I have one comment, please. Um, sure. There were five hotels in downtown Milton and they were built uh, to house the people that would be building the railroad. Interesting. Should we go on to the next um, agenda item? Referral from the Plan Commission for, no, no, we did that one. Request from the Community Development Authority for Arts Committee projects to support. Yes, so the CDA or the Community Development Authority that focuses primarily on things in the downtown, um, they are really, they were really excited to partner with the Arts Committee on the Love Your Neighbor mural. And they're looking for more ways to partner, not only with the Arts Committee, but they're looking at partnering with the Tourism Commission and other groups to expand the range of what they are able to do on their own. Um, and they've got a lot of ideas. They're very excited about the Stone Horse Green, um, green space going in in downtown. And they, They've mentioned an interest in right away starting up some pop-up summer events, um, and they want to they want to try to begin organizing some low-key, uh, low-cost, easy things that would happen on a regular basis in the Stonehorse Green. And so I'm going to take back some ideas to them at their meeting on June 3rd, but one thought that I had is um, if they would be willing to budget, I don't know what the amount is, but let's say it's $300 a week for one 
performer of some kind, an average of $300 a week, that we could schedule, pre-schedule 12, 12 small pop-up events that would happen throughout the summer. In order to do that, I would need for them to each take one evening and they would be responsible for going out and getting the performance lined up. So it could be music, um, it could be an artist that is just doing some work. Um, it could be a uh, poetry reading, it could be any number of things, but it would be arts and enter entertainment related. And then um, in addition to actually scheduling and being the person that's doing the coordinating for that evening, they would also need to show up that night and you know, provide some really limited opening remarks like, hey, this is sponsored by the CDA and if the arts committee wanted to participate as well and the arts committee of the city, here's what this is. This is really just a small scale pop-up. Eventually the Stonehorse Green is gonna be here. We're gonna have lots of events. So, um, so that's kind of what I have come up with since the meeting where they talked about a lot of ideas. Um, and then at their, before their next meeting, I'm gonna try to come up with a list of um, different performers that have done things at the library or have participated in the art walk or you know, it could be a storyteller, something that could be like more family oriented and then um, kind of give them the list. So I guess the goal that I, that I have in mind as a staff person who doesn't have time to organize 12 events this summer is that each committee member would need to take one night and kind of be responsible for that night. And if they're able to find something that costs a hundred dollars, that would enable someone who wants to book like a you know, a, a band with three members that's going to cost $500. But on average, I'm thinking like around 300 bucks a week would be a reasonable amount for the CDA to be able to sponsor. And then also we would have this with the goal in mind of it happening the same night of the week, the same time. So six to 8 p.m. or whatever, it, you know, whatever we decide on, preferably not Friday and Saturday nights. Those, those nights are already pretty booked and really busy at the Stonehorse Green. This would maybe be like a Wednesday night or a Thursday night. And um, with the goal of getting it organized quickly so that we could put together promotional materials and start getting it out there to people with all of the dates already lined up and booked. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, the CDA, in particular, Dan Barker, who's met with Meg, I know at least once or maybe a couple times, and he might have some some other thoughts about how to do that. And they're also, I think, interested in permanent art. So if there were something that the arts committee really wanted to do at a per particular intersection, let's say Harmenter and Hubbard, um, they might be able to help with the funding for that. Can I say something, Abby? Um, I've been in, I've been emailing back and forth with Dean a little bit about this and ways that the arts committee can work together with um, not just the CEA but also tourism and I've talked to Julie a little bit about this as well and um, so I told Dean that I would be willing to help them get some of these things going he sent me kind of a list of the things that he's got in mind I sent him a list of some of the things that I've been tossing around and a lot of them match up. And so I told him and Julie both that, you know, I would do whatever I could that we want to promote the arts committee. Um, and so, the, you know, I, I will be willing definitely to work on this project um, because I think that, you know, in talks with Dan and I'm sure Meg feels the same way, he kind of wants to have like an art synergy throughout the city um, and so I think that that's a, a good approach to this. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there that I've been talking to him and Julie both and that I will be willing to work on this. Excellent, thank you, Michelle. I have met with him a couple of times um, and what I get the sense of is that he didn't understand my reference, but he wants to make Middleton into a little star's hollow and have like events all the time and Gilmore Girls is literally my favorite show so thank you so much for that. <laughs> I know I told him that after I talked I was like so you want this to be stars hollow he was like I have no idea what that means I'm like okay but he wants people downtown like all the time just walking around and shopping 
shopping and you know and I, when I talked to them I really I told them like flat out I don't I don't know why the arts committee would be opposed to this this is exactly what our goals are like it aligns completely with it so I told him that we would help as needed you know but he wants things to move fast and it was like okay well <laughs> we need a little time <laughs> so I'm happy to help too whatever whatever comes my way yeah, and I think um, I mean, I'm getting a lot of requests from people who are wanting to play music at the green or have an event or do something. And it's like, we're kind of to the point where I, I've been so hyper-focused on fundraising for the project that I haven't really put any effort into developing like the policies for how we're gonna host events at the space and that kind of thing. Um, the fundraising is going very well. We are going to be building this thing um, next year for sure. It's going to happen. Um, we probably, we, we actually thought about trying to like go back to the idea of building it this year because we're doing so well on our fundraising campaign. But I don't, I think that we would not be, it would be ill-timed given the construction costs and everything right now. But starting next year, we are going to be constructing it. And so I think I like the idea of like just a small scale pop up thing happening this year to get kind of the excitement building for the space and that kind of thing. But we just we're so our staff is so small. We're trying to get we are trying to get the CDA to fund a half time downtown position that would start in the spring when the green is opening up so that we can like program the space and we can have somebody who can go and drag out barricades to block off the street on Friday. Um, if we do decide to do the street closure and try that out and see how it works, just closing that little segment um, next to the, the space. Um, so we're, we're kind of trying to get ready for it, but what we, whatever we could do this year would be on a really small scale com compared to what we can do when we actually have a staff person to help out. Well, I, I think some of his goals too, um, I know he wants to get these pop-ups going, but I think some of his goals too are more long-term. I know he did wanna um, block off Terrace Ave instead. And uh, in several conversations with him, I said, I felt like we should direct it more towards Stone Green, Stonehorse Green because um, that is gonna be the designated space. Um, and I think Terrace Ave would be harder to block off. I agree with that. Unless Capital Brewery is having like a big event, it mm -hmm. sort of feels a little removed. So if we if we were to try to pull this off, I mean, is can you guys envision um, how we could have like an arts focused um, like who we could get to come and do different events that would be interesting like for families to and exciting for families to see i know we did some demonstrations in the green as part of the art walk so maybe something like that yeah we might you know if we're trying to attract families too if we're having something like a uh, live music or a poetry reading we might also consider doing um, you know, like an activities area for kids, for younger kids um, to keep them entertained because sometimes kids get bored with stuff like that. Um, I wonder if we could um, work with the library because they have all those like craft kits that they have for the kids. Oh, right. Just take them. I'm not sure who funds that. It must be friends of the library. Um, but they're really handy because they're already kind of like packaged up and easy to take or do on the spot. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. I could walk across the street and talk to Jocelyn about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, that was another thing that Dan was talking about is like all the committees coming together and working together because we all have common goals. And I definitely agree with that. You know, why work harder when you can work smarter? Is that the phrase? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but the one I emailed Abby before that I was really popular at the Art Walk was the glass blower. He was really fun to watch. Now, I don't know if that would work with a crowd because you kind of have to stay away from him. Like you have to kind of fence it off a little bit, but that could be fun. And I know at the library, the um, Irish dancers are always really popular. <laughs> so that could be fun, like a fun performance to watch. And that involves yeah, yeah. kids too. 
Yeah, I might be able to get some of the local businesses too, just like um, Regal Find or John Christine Gallery, or you know, I know my company would definitely take some to have some, you know, for kids, for families. Just that's an easy crafting activity or something, you know, some setup that they could watch. So it's definitely worth exploring. Abby, I think if you want to take this like serial event proposal to them, what might be the easiest first step is just create like an Excel spreadsheet of every performer, storyteller, like artist that you know, and their contact information and what they do, and just kind of put it all in one place. And then you can refer to that and kind of pick and choose and assign dates from that. Um, the other thing with kids activities, I think, isn't there a, there's like a sidewalk on the street along um it's not lone girl because that's one key what am i thinking of the brewery no oh, um, capital no the one right on the corner long table oh yeah i couldn't think of that word there's like not that side of the street but along stone horse green the sidewalk something that i'm working on with my nonprofit in prairie de sac is a kid's sidewalk chalk festival it's like a really cheap family event that's outside and you just give a kid a bucket of chalk in a square and they're entertained for a while um, if you have music like this, I think establishing some like consistent factors, like they always set up in the same corner of the space and they always, you know, do they, are musicians responsible for bringing their own sound equipment? If there is any, like kind of having some ground rules laid out even before you pick musicians will be helpful. I will save some time, I think. Just kind of my two cents there. Those are really good points. Christina, thank you. What's his timeline, Abby? When's he wanna get these going? Well, he was calling it like fun in the summer brought to you by the CDA. So I don't know the summer, if, you, if you're counting like when school is out, school is out on June 4th. Um, so it's pretty quick. <laughs> So how would you like to proceed? Uh, do you need um, do you need a motion from us, or should we just? Uh, it sounds like Michelle and Meg have already worked with these with the CDA. Should we just let them continue to do so, or are you are you looking for something more specific? I guess just finding out if if it, I mean it sounds like from the members who have spoken up, you're interested in ways to partner. Um, if there are like you know, three specific ideas that you want to send back to them. You know, it's kind of, this is the issue that Dan Barker <laughs> raised is it would be so much easier if the two committees could meet together and kind of brainstorm together. And we can do that. I've mentioned that to the CDA a couple times that we could um, have a joint meeting with them. Um, for example, the Sustainability Committee and the Workforce Housing Committee are going to have a joint meeting in June because they're trying to partner on energy efficiency for affordable housing. So if there were like a couple of projects that you wanted to further discuss with them, um, we could have a joint meeting. Um, or oh. if you wanted to go back and tell them, we like this, the fun in the summer, we'll help out with that. Also, we want to do an art installation at this corner and here are the ideas that we talked about previously. I'm thinking about like the Parmenter and Hubbard intersection um, or maybe if you wanted to give them the utility box art idea or the um, the idea that Meg McCombs brought up the um, street notes. You wanted to partner with them on that. That would be a good one. I don't know. I mean just whatever you want to send back to them. That would be really fun with those windows lying in. The historical windows. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, that would be well timed. Oh, that was another thing that Dan Barker brought up. He's apparently working with the Historical Society on doing like a, a historical reenactment. <laughs> I think that's amazing. That would be so cool. Well, there's one event right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So and that's funny because my boss wants to do that when he he's retiring in a year and he wants to be the person that does the reenactment. So this really is going to become Stars Hollow. <laughs> you know, for kids, uh, since it's Stone Horse Green, you could offer pony rides, I suppose. You have a pony, Rob? Uh, no. 
<laughs> I don't, but I know there are people around who offer them. That's funny. So do we need to make a motion or what do we need to do? I think we send back support and, you know, if they're looking at doing one each week in the summer, it's kind of a quick turnaround. So we should probably get budgets and dates and everything like that lined up as soon as possible. I'm definitely willing to help out in any way, shape or form, so. That's a, a good point actually, because we don't know how much all the artists charge, do we? We have prices. We have to contact them. I would think a lot would be will. I mean, speaking for myself personally, I think a lot of artists would be willing to do it just for the exposure. So that would probably be a good angle to take to keep the budget low for things like music equipment and setup and everything. Um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I do just hesitate like I know they would do it for free but I think as an arts committee we want to be the ones advocating for artists to make money based on what they're doing so even though they would do it for free I would probably offer them something and let them decline it um, if they want to do it or donate it or something I hate I just would hate to ask somebody to do something for free and then feel pressured into it when we are the arts committee yeah are we, are we able to promote them on like Facebook through the city and things like that beforehand to give them some more feed and opportunities. Yes, we could do that. Abby, do you think that this is something where it would be beneficial to do a call for artists? And then in the call for artists, they have to provide how much the rates are? Or would that be I don't know if we'd have time. Yeah, I feel like we probably wouldn't have time. So what if we all came up with like three or four uh, people that we know or that we think would be willing to participate. Um, I agree though that we need to pay them something and maybe we just have a cap on that that we pay no more than X amount for each performance or each each time. Yeah, for the quick turnaround, I agree, Michelle. I think that's the best way to go with just coming up with a few people that we each know and seeing what their interest level would be. It would be good to get a, you know, kind of a broad, array of different types of artists too, just to create that exposure over the weeks. Well, and I'm wondering too, like Good Neighbor Fest, some of the um, groups that are in the parade are like dance groups, or I think there's a drumming core. I think that, you know, that might be a, a good resource for us too, um, because, and um, I think it'll be hardest to find writers and, you know, performance artists. We have kind of, I think, a, a good handle on fine art, but, and music, but I think it'll be harder to find those other folks. John and Sarah Schaefer live in the neighborhood. And uh, John was head of the music department for 15 years at the university. And Sarah is, uh, has many uh, instruments that she plays and John does too. Uh, and you could certainly use them as a resource person. Are you talking about John Schaefer from PRFC? Yes. Yeah, same John. Yeah, we can reach out to him. So you know, I can go ahead, uh, sorry. I was just gonna say I can reach out to Nicole Gruder too, and she's the one who was the organizer of the uh, jazz walk. And you know, they have had um, a lot of cancellations of performances. And I don't know that the jazz walk is gonna happen this year, but some of the musicians that perform there might be willing to um, come. And the library also, they do events where they have musicians. They might have some ideas of people that we could get to perform. So anyway, that's, that's the that's idea that. of working with some of the strolling musicians from the jazz mm -hmm. festival. That's a good idea. I know Nicole's out for a while, um, but Nick Moran has also helped organize the one in Middleton, so he might be able to help us out. So do you have enough direction, Abby, or should we form a subcommittee? How would you like to proceed? Um, I can just take this back to the CDA, and I'm just hearing, it sounds like you're willing to, to help out and assist and um, why don't you guys, if you have like a few different ideas for artists or performers, 
email those to me and I'll start working on the list, like what Christina mentioned, so that when I go to the CDA, I'll have some options to give them because they're not going to know where to start. Um, so I think that's that sounds good. Okay. Um, should we move on to the next ag agenda item number four? Idea for a local business owner for sculptures around Middleton signifying five elements of the city, housing, community, commerce, innovation, and recreation. Yes, so um, I know we're trying to stick with <laughs> our master plan addendum, but we also, I think um, we're interested in opportunities that arise. And so this, is, this falls into the category of opportunities that arose. Um, there is a, <laughs> There is a local gentleman, his name is Steve Cohen, and he uh, owns a building on Terrace Avenue where uh, the VA, the Veterans Administration is located. And he, um, it's the place where there's additional parking for Capital Brewery for people who don't generally visit the VA building. Um, he is helping to fund um, one of the stone horses at the Stone Horse Green, or he's, he's actually sponsoring a stone horse, a Stone Horse Green. He's very passionate about art and he loves actual size artworks, um, Gail and Eris that design the public art that's in the Stone Horse Green. And so he had this idea that he brought to our city administrator for having like five sculptures around the city by actual size artwork that would signify what he thought were the main points about Middleton. So housing, commerce, commerce would maybe be a sculpture that would be located in the Greenway area, something about the trails, et cetera. He had five ideas and our city administrator was like, yeah, we really like your ideas. We have this arts committee and you know, started talking about some of the projects that the committee is working on and mentioned that the arts committee hasn't really, you know, had funding to do a lot of um, sculptures. And he said that he would be willing to help us pay for it. And so I don't, I, I haven't talked with him about it. I did invite him to this meeting, but he wasn't available to come tonight. Um, and I've also talked with Gail Simpson at Actual Size, and I'm going to try to set up a meeting with her and Steve um, directly to Kind of talk about ideas but i just wanted to at least bring it to your attention um today and let you know that there is some interest there and he said that he would be willing to help the arts committee fund it sounds promising yes Steve is a great guy we actually we designed the va facility <laughs> that's right did, i and, forgot about that yeah we've known steve for a lot of years so i'd, I'd love to um being on those talks, I never knew he was such an art enthusiast. He's in our office all the time. Yes, yeah. I remember going to his building a couple of years ago and he showed me the drawings that um, Steve Schulfer had done for the entryway and how the building could be reconfigured. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't realize he was um, an arts enthusiast either. I know he's really creative, but I didn't know he was into art, but sounds like he is. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. So should we go um, to number five, discussion of funding collected for out of the shelf sculpture project in the Parmenter Street roundabout? Yeah, I know we've already made a decision on this, um, but then there was that one lingering thing about, um, we, Rob was trying to get an in-person meeting with somebody from the DOT and then the pandemic hit. And so um, Meg McCombs asked me to put this back on the agenda again because she's thinking that we can use that money that's been collected to do some other projects. And um, Meg is gonna have to remind me of the additional item that she wanted to add to that letter that we had come up with that we were gonna be sending to everyone who had contributed. There was like one thing else you wanted to put to the end of it. Now I can't remember what project it was. It was the grant for artists, like the- Oh, okay, yes, thank you. But our version of it, whatever it would be called. Yeah, so just um, as a reminder, we had collected about $12,000, plus we had a $30,000 matching grant um, commitment, and we wrote a letter, and it was going to have a list of alternative projects that those donors could 
contribute their funds to instead of out of the shell with one remaining thing at the end being they could have their funds returned if they asked for that. Um, and so, I, you know, we haven't sent the letter because what, right before the pandemic, Rob was like thinking that there still might be a, a way with the DOT and he wanted to talk with them um, because that was gonna have some, that would change the way that we wrote the letter a little bit. But I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, we probably should go ahead and send the letter, right? Yeah, I think I would vote to send the letter. Do we have um, like what it looks like or what the options are? I can't even remember anymore. Let me um, see if I can quickly get on my um, VPN so I can get to it. Sorry. No problem. While you're looking at me, maybe I'll give a little background about sculpture in the roundabout. This was something of an idea that we had, uh, boy, a long time ago. We just, we had a, a new arts committee. We wanted to put something that would sort of call attention to the fact that uh, Middleton was striving to get some art. It was an expensive project. We had a, an artist who, uh, had proposed a design. Unfortunately, she retired before we could raise the money to do it. And then in the meantime, uh, the DOT said, sorry, no arts, no, no sculptures in the roundabout. They said we could build one next to the roundabout, not, but not in the roundabout. I think the sentiment of the committee now is that it's probably a waste of time to continue to pursue that, which particularly since we didn't have the money. Uh, I'm not sure we still have the money, but uh, um, you know, if we were going to do something like that, it would have to be adjacent to the roundabout and we have to hire a new artist. So I think Meg's idea is a good one to find alternative ways to spend that money if the donors are willing to go along with it. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I can't get on to our share drive at City Hall right now from my computer, so I can't pull up the letter. But um, this the the only two people that are remaining on the arts committee that were here when that project was approved are our two members that are outgoing. So I I definitely feel that it's time to just put that Move aside. Exactly. Move on. <laughs> Move on. Figure out another project that we can accomplish. Exactly. Should we um, keep this on the agenda for next time and then we can just review the letter. And then yeah. vote on whether people want to add the grant as another option, the grant funding. And then I'll, I'll include the letter in your packet next time. Okay. And then we can vote on sending it out then, or do we not need to vote? Well, you already voted to send it out actually. Oh, well, that's right. But this would just be adding the grant as another option. Well, I suppose if nobody else wants to add the grant, then we could just send it. Right? And so the, the I think grants... it's a good idea. I mean, it's we're trying to get that program off the ground, and that might be something that people want to contribute to. OK. So hold off. So the grant is the small grant to a local artist to do something in town, kind of like the modeled after the Blink grant in Madison, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll probably have to come up with a name. But Madison already picked the best name. <laughs> Can we steal it? No. <laughs> probably. <laughs> okay. So should we go into number six, uh, updates on marketing and communication? I'll let Michelle handle this one. I don't have much. The first arts encounter, art encounters um, was in the paper today. Was that you that messaged me? It was. I don't have you on my phone. I got my Middleton Tribune. No, oh. 
today and I was like oh my gosh it's in the newspaper I was like who is this that messaged me because I don't have your name on my phone so <laughs> um so yeah so that kicked off and we're gonna do that once a month um that's about it I mean I don't think do we have any other updates we talked about it and we don't really have anything else this time do you have anything that needs to be going out on the city Facebook page anytime soon? I know we are keeping an eye on that Dane County fund for artists. So once we have that, we can use one of your templates, Meg, and post that information. Yeah, if somebody wants to send me the information, I can just mock it up real quick or send me a link to where I find what I need to cut and paste or whatever. Um, and then actually we probably should do one for the art encounter, shouldn't we, Michelle? Are you putting it on the Yeah, I'll send you the information for that. I'll send you the text and the photo for that. Okay. Um, do you want the header too, or do you want to use the template? Um, you can send it. Okay. And I also want to give a shout out to Ben Scott, our graphic designer who did the header for that. I thought he did a good job. I think he, I told him what we wanted and that was what he came up with. So I don't know if you all have seen it or not. Um, but I can show you because Emily Kuhn posted it on her Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, Emily was my first victim. When we decide what we're doing with um, with this uh, CDA, should we also um, post something about? a call for artists on our website or on Facebook? Um, I don't know if we're gonna have a time, if we're gonna have time to do a call for artists, but we would definitely wanna promote it. Do you have an artist in mind for next time already, Michelle? Oh, you mean a call for artists for art encounters? No, no, I meant for the, no, no, I meant for the, cooperative with the stuff at the stone horse green i'm back up. i got off topic there mm -hmm. i was just thinking about that when we were talking about facebook posting um but do i have somebody else in mind i have a whole list of people i haven't contacted anybody yet for next time um do you have somebody that you want me to feature aaron summers <laughs> 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 See, now then I'll get accused of, you know, having too many city committee members or council members. And I've got to, you know, walk a fine line. <laughs> what about the guy who makes the, um, the little dinosaur statues? Oh, I don't think I know him. I forget his name. I don't know him either. Are you looking for a specific type of art? Because we do a lot with Jeremiah Logman. He does um, things from reclaim barnwood he did the whole interior for like state line distillery he's got a lot of stuff at regal find does he live in middleton where does he live now he's gosh i have to ask him where he actually lives now <laughs> he bounces a lot but he's local i don't know about the city of middleton though i have to ask him well, I'm open to suggestions. But we have a great list from like the art walk. Don't we? Mm -hmm. Well, and again, it doesn't have to be a fine artist. It can be a writer. It can be a dancer. It can be whatever, whatever mm -hmm. genre of art, fine art, as long as it's fine art, that's what we're sticking with. But anyway, I'm open to suggestions if you guys want to send me your suggestions, but I do have the list from the art walk. So I have that to draw from, from visual, for visual artists. Okay. Yeah, I know a lot of dancers, so I'll have to think. Yeah. Should we move on to uh, item seven, public art master plan addendum draft? Meg, I guess this is yours. Yeah, I sent Abby the updated version, which she has in here. Um, I don't know if anyone else wanted to make any changes. I got changes from Rob and Christina. And I did make all the changes except for the one Rob sent. I had to shorten down a little bit. But other than other than that, um, 
I think it's, other than that, it's ready if you guys don't have changes. So we want to make great. It. Thanks. It does look great. You did a fabulous job. You did. So do we want to adopt this as an official document of the Arts Committee? I, I, I don't know exactly. Are, is there some way you want to um, market it? I don't know. I think it has, does it have to go to the Common Council now? What's that? Yep. Yes, I think the Arts Committee should recommend approval to the Common Council. I, I wonder if it should go to the Plan Commission too. Do you think that that would be beneficial? Because I'm just thinking like, if we get to the, you know, if we get approval of the TIF policy, they're gonna probably be, I mean, they handled design review for the new buildings. And so it might be good for them to get an idea of some of the projects that the committee is working on. It's I put this in the packet for the CDA too, just so you know, Meg, um, so they could see it. Cause they're kind of looking at, they're trying to figure out how to do like a short term plan for what they want to accomplish as well. So I included this so they could take a look at it. I think it would be good to distribute it among city committees, uh, just to, it, you know, it's like planting seeds uh, for the things we want to do and for advertising the goals of the arts committee. So um, I guess we need a motion to accept this and then Abby can distribute it as she sees fit to uh, you know, the CDA or the plan commission or the council or whatever. So I'll make a motion that we accept this uh, Meg's draft in its current form. I'll second. Okay, Christina seconds. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Again, great job, Meg. Thanks for all the effort that you put into this. Thanks. So I'll put this on the plan commission agenda for next Tuesday, the 27th, and then I'll take it to the council on June, or let's see, yeah, June 1st. Okay, cool. So is the next agenda item a uh, percent for arts program discussion? Yeah, so I don't really have anything new to report with this. I made some edits to the previous document and then I wasn't able to attend last month's meeting. So I'm not sure if there are updates for this. Nothing on my end, but. The last meeting, um, the Arts Committee referred this to our city attorney and I sent it over to him, but I haven't gotten any feedback from him yet. This is a nice follow up though to the addendum. So if the addendum goes to the council and gets approved, and then this comes shortly after, the timing would be good. Right, exactly. So uh, once you get it back from the city attorney, then you'll just forward it directly to the council? No, I'll bring it back to the arts committee first for a formal rec recommendation. Okay, sounds good. Any other comments about the Percent for Arts program? So let's see, uh, updates on maintenance. Uh, Megan and Mike Freiman's are not here. Yeah, I'll take care, I'll take care of this one. Um, I apologize last week, last month that I, <laughs> I, I lost uh, my internet. I didn't realize that I was spotty until I had to talk, but cause I could hear everybody fine the whole time. I uh, actually ran home from the cafe where I was, and by the time I got home, you guys had finished. <laughs> so I, I apologize. Was meeting last time. Okay. Um, so in the packet um, that Abby sent out is um, the city of Middleton's um, maintenance plan for public art. And then the document after that is a sort of almost like a list of questions that Michael and I drew up to sort of flesh that out because the maintenance plan is incredibly vague. Um, there are a couple of things I would change in it, um, but mostly it's fine. It's just sort of doesn't really go far enough. And I think one of the biggest questions is decide who will do these tasks. It says the tasks will be done, but it doesn't really say who will do them. 
Um, so if you guys will indulge me, maybe we'll just go through the document, the second page, and I'll just give you some comments since I'm on my way out the door about what, what I wish could have happened while I was still on the committee. Um, so for the, can everybody see this? Yeah, okay, I just got it up. So for number one, I think that the maintenance plan says that we should plan for maintenance, um, but it doesn't really, as I said, it's very vague. And I think for each piece of artwork, we need a plan that could go into the web, um, the database that we talked about. Um, so I hope that you guys will try out a couple of those databases and choose one to use. And this, the items in number two are just an example of what could go into that. Christina will have a lot more detail on that. Um, so that, so, and then also I think the, so I think the biggest question really here is number three and four, because we have never assigned anybody the task of looking at the artwork for the new, for our new members, we discovered that we had bullet holes in a sculpture only because by accident someone went by there to see it. Um, who knows how long that could have been there before we noticed it. Um, I also don't know, I think the only piece of artwork that we have that is being actively treated right now is the stained glass windows. And um, that's because Abby wrote up a, a list of what not to do to them, but I don't even know how often those are being cleaned. So I just feel like once, as we start to get more and more pieces, we need to have a better uh, grasp on what's happening with each. And then um, of course the number four, the funding, it just, it seems to be a perennial concern and we weren't, really prepared the last time that we had to um, treat, when we had to treat quadrants, we didn't really, we ended up having to uh, do it sort of ad hoc <laughs> in a, in a uh, hose bay with volunteers. <laughs> so I, I feel like if we have a little bit more planning done ahead of time, it'll just be easier when the, when these, um, questions come up. I will also say that um, for number one E, we have um, to have a procedure in place for reacts to react into complaints from public re regarding condition. We have a document in place for reacting to complaints from the public about the art itself, if it's offensive, if it's ugly, if it's inappropriate. So that could be a basis um, for that for that one. That could be like a baseline document. I also think um, it is a disappointment to me that we never drilled down on um, in the maintenance plan number four, the artist will have the opportunity to comment on and participate in all repairs and restorations that they that are made during his or her lifetime. And I know we've talked about this before, but the Visual Artist Rights Act of 1990 um, could come into play with us if we were to have a piece of artwork that became iconic for the city. That was always one of our goals was to have an iconic piece. And um, it would be a shame if we lost control of that iconic piece once we got it. So the artists on the committee will know all about that and maybe the city um, attorney can weigh in on that. But I think it should be part of the original contract with the artist. So that's my, sorry to leave you with a bunch of questions. But I think this is, these are the things that need to be fleshed out for the maintenance plan. So do you want to, ex do you want us to accept this as written or do you think it should be uh, fleshed out some more? I think this is really just a list of unanswered questions that the arts committee needs to answer. But should we, I think the arts committee can accept this with uh, the understanding that those are issues we have to address. Do you want us to do this? Shall we do that, Abby? What do you think? Oops, I'm sorry, Rob. I was trying to unmute myself and I think I accidentally muted you instead. Um, I think that the first document has already been approved, this one. And so what Megan and Michael put together is some new objectives and then some questions for the committee to answer. Okay. Yeah, those action items were really for Michael and me. 
to have done before the next time he and I met. Um, and the lessons above it are just things, incidences where we didn't, where we suffered because we didn't have our ducks in a row. Um, and I will add to that when we lost a piece of artwork for a little while. So that's one of the, one of the benefits of having the database that tracks the location of things. So we'll just accept this as a work in progress, not a formal document to be uh, approved at this time. Is that, is that what you have in mind, Megan? Yes, yeah, so if, if I were gonna be on the committee, I guess, I guess what I would suggest is, like I would probably ask for like one question to be put on each week to sort of sort of get the debate going or have volunteers to say who's gonna go around to the various artworks and check them and how often would that happen, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. It's a good idea because these things often get installed and then ignored, you know? Mm -hmm. Often do we check in on the stained glass windows and you know the lead and so on. Mm -hmm. How many people do we have on the committee now, Abby? Nine? I think we have 10 total if you count the student member. The student position, I believe, is a non-voting member, although I could be wrong about that because there was some debate I remember the council having and I can't remember where they landed on it. Okay. I, I believe we'll have 10 total. Because I think we have eight permanent pieces right now, right? So if we all had one as like our baby and we had to check up on it every couple months. Or Alternatively, we could each take a month and check all of them. That seems like a little bit more work though. Like if we each had, were assigned a month and drive around the city. And there are legacy committee members that could uh, participate in this as well. Yeah. That'd be I awesome. love that. Which, that one, which one do you want, Rob? <laughs> you your pick. You choose for me. I'm at your mercy. <laughs> So that could be an option. I wouldn't mind like, you know, going by a sculpture once a month. That's not a big deal. You know, just to make sure it's not in bad shape. I think each taking one is probably the easiest way to divvy that up. Mm -hmm. Knowing how it went when we try to divide all the parks amongst that committee and mm -hmm. a bit overwhelming to check up on all of that. And you know, you, is this something that like one of us could just assign a piece to each committee member? Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's, I'm fine with that. I mean, obviously if you have a problem, then we can work around it. I think the best way to do this is something that I know I've told you before our IT department strongly discourages, but if we had a Google doc, that would be a really easy way to just bookmark it. And when you go by, just go in and type in the date. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while, I'll pull it up and be like, okay, good. Every, everyone has, you know, checked in on whichever piece they're responsible for. Mm -hmm. And then maybe if there are like, like I remember when Megan, when Megan found the bullet holes in the sculpture, she also noted that there was litter and some other like trash around the sculpture that needed to be cleaned up. So it could be things like that as well. Mm -hmm. It seems like a good starting point. Is somebody good with Google Docs and want to set this up? I can put something together pretty quick, pretty simple. Okay. And some yeah. of us can take more than one. Uh, some of us operate on uh, looser schedules than others. So some of us would have more time to look into those things. <laughs> Don't rub it in, Rob. We all <laughs> want to be retired. <laughs> that's I how did I have so much time. Ask, oh go ahead Rob no that's gonna say that's why I have so much time to walk my dog <laughs> Meg's I walk by Meg's house every day probably twice Abby you're muted oh sorry um I wanted to ask Megan Mackey if she was familiar with this art conservation um recommendation I I had checked in with Cricket Harbeck on the bullet hole repair 
And she noted that she's having some physical limitations and she'll know more in July about whether or not she's gonna be able to um, do the work that we had. We haven't paid her, but we entered into a, an agreement with her. Uh -huh. And so I told her that I would check with you all and see if you wanted to proceed working and wait and see if um, come July, if she's doing better and she's able to do the work or if you wanted to reach out to someone else. And I, I told her that we'd probably stick with her because we had a hard time finding her. And then she said, well, I could suggest McKay Lodge out of Oberlin, Ohio. I was wondering if you. Yeah, it's gonna be so expensive. So oh, expensive. is it? <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a Cadillac of conservation. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, our insurance really policy good. probably won't cover it. <laughs> no, I mean, Cricket is really good, but she works on her own and she's essentially local. But McKay Lodge is going to be, I mean, they do things like state buildings and state capital buildings. And so you could try them, but I think they'd be really, really expensive. And yeah, also, I was worried about the distance. Yeah, and also um, it's good to have someone it's probably worth waiting for cricket because then for so for follow-up she's just a car ride away and they and with Michaela you might get a different staffer so okay I mean don't don't get me wrong they're excellent they've got a great reputation but I don't think we need them okay so why don't we just wait and I'll check back in with her in July and see how things are going and then I'll, and then if that doesn't work out, I'll reach out to Megan in Baraboo and ask her for some more recommendations or if she would be willing to help us because she won't be a committee member anymore. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it? I'll go to jail if I accept money from the, <laughs> what was it? That really scary clause in the, um, there was some scary clause that the city attorney said it's oh. a felony. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should have just volunteered. <laughs> okay, so what's next? So does anybody have any questions about my doomsday document here? <laughs> well, I mean, you suggested that we take one uh, issue at a time at, you know, subs you know in sequential, um, um, Arts committee meetings is that I think that sounds like a good approach. Is there a plan to try out those databases? We don't have I a specific. Haven't done that. I'm sorry. I had that on my list to do before this meeting, and I didn't get to it. Should we explain to our new members what that that is? Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. There were two that we were going to look into. One that. Megan suggested and one that Christina suggested. And since I don't have my notes here, why don't you each chime in and tell, tell us the names of them? Because I can't remember. Oh geez, I'm trying to remember mine. Um, I can't remember the name of the one I suggested. But You're basically- like Artifact, a -R -T -A. Oh yeah, Artichuck, I think it was. And basically for the new members, we looked at, at two different, um, databases to possibly purchase to keep track of our collection. And the theory was that if we got um, free temporary memberships that the um, committee members could log on and choose between them or neither to see if it could work for us. And the question is whether we wanted to spend any of our um, budget on paying for that. So I guess we need to get more information about those databases before we make a decision. Yeah, I have it on my list to set up a trial version and then send you all the logins so you can go and check it out yourselves. I, I'm sorry that I haven't done that yet. I think that's a good place to start because they are they will guide the committee through a lot of these things because you'll have to be filling out filling out these forms. So you'll have to it'll sort of guide you whichever one you choose. Do you think that's true, Christina? Yeah, that'll it'll answer a lot of like they'll ask questions that we probably don't know the answer to right now, but it 
we will need to know eventually. Um, so it will kind of be a discovery finding process for us. Mm -hmm. I'm also like, I am using the one that I suggested right now through my day job. So I can mock up a little like draft version of it for the arts committee and kind of do that. It wouldn't be the same because my system would be slightly different than what we would be getting, but I can do a little mini tour of my version of it. If someone can send me, is there like a, a list or, or database of photos and information of the pieces we have right now, like in the master plan or somewhere else where I can find all that? Meg's map, right Meg? There, besides um, the master plan, there's information on the website. So we have some image, like extra images on the website. Um, the only thing I have on the master plan is really like the name of the piece, the artist and what it's made of. And maybe, do I have when it was installed? I'm trying to think. If I don't, I probably should actually add that. Um, Cause Abby sent me all those dates. So my, oh yeah, I do, okay. So that's pretty much the only information I have on them. Abby would have more if there is more. That's a, that's a good start. I could kind of start with that and um, kind of mess around with it, but it is still worth it to get the like free temporary tour options for the softwares. Christina, what is the one called that you are using again? It's called Artwork Archive. So where are we agenda-wise? I think that was it tonight. Yep, that was the last item, Rob. So we've said everything we want to say about it. <clears throat> okay, so I guess this is, uh, how do you say, adios, sayonara, whatever, whatever the appropriate words are. <laughs> oh. Um, before you say goodbye to us, uh, Rob, I would like to my two cents worth in on the quadrants. Um, I remember in the review when it was when it went on, um, George Zen said question why it was not on city property and, and on private property. And r shortly after that, I was at a meeting for District One. And I thanked Kathy Olson for not voting in favor of it. And applause, there was a lot of applause with that snide remark. And I think that quadrants could be sold to the highest bidder or sold for scrap metal. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Well, it was once sold for scrap metal, but we got it back. <laughs> okay. Um, it is just to clarify one thing about that. It is on a public access easement. So it's on private property, but the city has an easement over the area where the sculpture is located. Okay, anything else? Okay, thank you all. I'll, uh, you may see my name on future Arts Committee meetings, even if you don't see my face, but I'll listen in to make sure you're taking good care of my baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thanks, thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.